strife, anxiety, and unrest be to you. Oh, sorry. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Words matter, don't they? If I hadn't corrected myself there, you would probably be wondering, where is this going? But as I was meditating on the three texts that were read in our service today, some phrases that you've probably heard came to mind, phrases that our world likes to say that refer to a truth, but as we see in our epistle reading today, miss a deeper truth. What is in a word? Actions speak louder than words. Talk is cheap. Now, our world's come up with many phrases like this to point out that mere words don't mean much. Yet, if we read our epistle in James chapter 3, his description of words doesn't make it sound like they're weak and cheap and that they don't matter. Instead, we get almost a scary picture of how powerful words are and can be. It seems to say that words are far stronger than we give them credit. It seems to say that the power of words controls the whole of a creature, just like the bridle in the mouth of a horse. I was chuckling as I was reading that earlier in the week because it reminded me of an experience where I learned firsthand the power of a bridle. I was attending summer camp in high school with a venturing crew, which back in the day when it was Boy Scouts, that was the co-ed branch. And so our youth group went on a summer camp, a week-long summer camp, and two days into the trip, we were going to go on a horseback ride. Sounds like a lot of fun. And before then, you all have to get your saddles and the saddle blankets and and get the horses ready to go. Well, as I was saddling my horse, I had a rather unpleasant experience. The horse I was to ride, his name was Stoney, I still remember that, he stepped on my foot. Now, as you can imagine, it hurt pretty bad. The average full-grown horse weighs about 900 pounds. So, of course, I started pushing against the horse as hard as I could over and over again, and I could tell I might as well have been one of the flies that his tail was swishing because it didn't do a thing. Thankfully, of his own volition, he shifted his weight, and I was able to loosen my foot. And fortunately, I didn't have any lasting damage. Yet later, as I was riding this exact same horse, holding the reins, I could direct him wherever I wanted him to go with very little movement, with almost no effort. This is the image, one of them, that James uses in chapter 3 to describe the kind of influence our tongue, representing the words that we speak, has over us. Something that seems very small but can alter the trajectory of the whole person. And an image like this must force the Christian to reevaluate our world's perception of words. Is talk really cheap? Do actions speak louder than words? What is in a word? Today, as we meditate on God's Word, I'm going to encourage you to reflect. Reflect on your words, on the words that you speak to God, your Father in heaven. Reflection on the words that you speak to yourself and reflection on the words you speak to others. At various times and with differing intensity, everyone sitting here today has felt the truth that words are powerful. Whether the words were spoken to inspire and encourage, or they were spoken cruelly to belittle and break down, we all know that words are powerful. In fact, if we think about it, the basis for all our relationships in this world, and as we will see in the world to come, are based primarily on words. Today, as I encourage this reflection, I want to remind you of one last thing, that in all three of these reflections, the words you speak to God, to yourself, and to others, our understanding of how that should work and what that means and what is at stake has been informed 
by the word spoken to us in Jesus Christ. If you, th- if you think about it, it's fitting because the Scriptures give us a definition of who Jesus is that illustrates the primacy of word in all of creation, that Jesus is described in John chapter 1 as the logos, which is the Greek word for word. He is the word made flesh. It's starting to sound like words are pretty powerful, that words might be at the center of being, in fact, for the Christian. You see, in our world, all the things that you see and all the things that you are were created by word. God's word in the beginning. He spoke, and it was so. And today, and in the weeks past, and in the weeks to come until Christ's return, it is that exact same word that speaks to you the promises of God. And it does what it says. It has the power to redeem the irredeemable, to forgive the hopeless, and to make those who are spiritually dead alive with an eternal life. Now, today in our modern world, the importance of words can't be overstated. Words have always been important, but now their impact is magnified on a scale never before seen. And the enemy of our God, our enemy, is using this truth to frightful effect. It is no accident that control of information, control of words, has always been a condition of power in our world. It is the heart of any sort of tyranny. That is why inventions like the printing press in the 15th century sparked a major world event like the Reformation, and today we are living in the midst of a similar event brought on by the internet. Because words matter, and words are powerful. In every culture that has attempted to stamp out the Christian faith, Their number one target is always God's Word. They outlaw it, they burn it, they seek to find every copy and destroy it because the enemy knows the peril that comes with the Word of God. We have a hymn in our hymnal, and we sung it not too long ago, and I know we're going to sing it on Reformation Sunday, Thy Strong Word. This hymn highlights the truth of the Scripture's that James is teaching us today. The first line of this hymn is, Thy strong word did cleave the darkness. At thy speaking it was done. Now, of course, this line is referring to the origin of all created things. Back in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke, and with His word made everything. And in Jesus, that same word seeks to reclaim what was lost to the enemy with a new and gracious word, a new and generous act of creation. But we'll come back to that in a moment. In James' epistle today, he is emphasizing the weight of words. The weight of words emphasizes the important role of a teacher, which he highlights at the beginning, as well as it emphasizes the importance of prayer in our gospel reading today. That same word that made all things is going to reclaim what was lost. He emphasizes the weight of words using the image of a bridle and a horse and a rudder for a ship, a small thing that directs the course of something much larger. He shows that it, since the fall into sin, the source, it's the source of much of our unrighteousness, that it can set our whole life on fire in sin. And many of us have experienced moments where our words have indeed done exactly that. A cruel word spoken to a spouse or a friend, and as soon as the words came out of your mouth, you wish you hadn't said them. They did such damage to your relationship, and in some cases, the damage doesn't recover. The damage is such that we have a hard time seeing others the way that God intends us to see them, namely as fellow humans for whom Christ died. James teaches us this when he says, with it, our tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. Words spoken about ourselves can have the same effect. They can damage us and prevent us from ever seeing ourselves the way that God wants us to see ourselves. They can cause us to see ourselves as broken and irredeemable. After all, who knows our secret sins and thoughts 
better than us. We can pretend most of the time, but as James reminds us, no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And lastly, the words spoken to God and about God can have such an effect. Words that we say or hear from others that twist our perception of who God is and how He feels about us. We can become convinced that by our own words or the words of others that God, if He even exists, doesn't care about me. If He did, then He would fix my problems, and He hasn't. James highlights that the same tongue that speaks blessings also speaks curses to God. Now, while James here highlights the power of words in a warning, warning of their misuse and abuse when talking to yourself, others, and to God, there's also a flip side to this truth. As Christians, we are taught that words matter a lot. But this isn't only true when it comes to the misuse of words. It is also true of the proper use of words. This is why James is warning us so strongly about the power of words, because they can be used and are used for the greatest goods. We have the famous introduction to the Gospel of John that points this out so clearly. Jesus Himself is the Word made flesh. He has come as the same Word that was spoken at the beginning that created all things. And He has come to speak that same Word of creation, and just as in the beginning, at thy speaking it was done. In the third verse of thy strong Word, the Word of Jesus is described as, thy strong Word bespeaks us righteous. Dear friends in Christ, that same word of Jesus said, let there be light, and there was, says to you today, your sins are forgiven, and they are, given and shed for you, and it is. I have placed my name on you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and He has, because at thy speaking it is done. So today, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we hear the warning of James, And as we hear the new word made flesh declare to us the promises of the gospel, I entreat you, reflect on your words. The words you use to talk to God, the words you use to talk to yourself, the words you use to talk to others. But above all, reflect on the words that God speaks to you with. Words of life, forgiveness, and an unending glory in God's kingdom. Yes, it's true in our modern culture, words do seem cheap. I believe that a tactic of the enemy. Now it's so much easier to use your words to reach so many more people, and he tries to convince you that that means they mean less. Well, I would never say something behind so-and-so's back in person, but online, no problem. I can hide behind the anonymity and I won't have to face the consequences. You should read the book of James. He doesn't agree. In fact, words are not cheap. Words are rich, rich in the depth of the grace of God. And it's a sign of His grace and generosity that they come so easily. And we see this reflected in His relationship to us when He bathes us every Sunday in the abundance of His grace often to the point where we feel like the gospel is too good to be true. Does God really feel that way about me? Has He really done those things for me? Does He really use me, as broken as I am, to share these words with others? Yes, He does. Our world thinks words are cheap. The Scriptures tell us a different story. Words are not worthless. Instead, it teaches us that the Word created everything that is and has made us new in Jesus. It tells us that the Word of God took on flesh to declare the good news of the gospel to us, the same Word that spoke all things into existence. If that's true, then we better weigh our words carefully. 
and at the same time pour them out generously in love. Because now that the Word has become flesh, the words of Christians are the words that they have stemmed, that stem from God's words. They're words that create life. They forgive sins and they turn us and others into the eternally alive children of God. Dear friends in Christ, you can trust these words are true for you because when it comes to God's Word, at thy speaking, it is done. In the name of Jesus, amen.